Today's lesson is called "Your Apps May Know More About You Than You Think." Day one. Hi everyone. My name is Jeff. I'm Roger. Today we're going to talk about your smartphones, the favorite device that you just love and you can't leave your home without. And of course, if you want to use your good old smartphone, you've got to download some apps. Or A P P as you call them here.、Oh, please, please don't. I hear that so often. People talking about A P P's. Oh man, don't make that mistake too. These are apps, everyone. The word app is short for application. It means computer program, a program that you usually run on a Mac or on a smartphone of some kind. Yeah, it kind of drives me crazy when my wife says, "Oh yeah, take a look at this new A P P I downloaded." It's not. A P P. Although the words A P P do spell app, it's not an A P P. Those letters put them together, form the word app. Say it. It's short for application. It's like if I were to say, "Yeah, Roger, I just downloaded an A P P L I C A T I O N." Well, that's very obnoxious why would of you I to do, spell the whole word. Why would I do that? Yeah, I'm very bad、no、at、sense. spelling to begin with. So yes, you're testing my spelling ability there. But I was going to say, who are we to tell people here in Taiwan how to use this term when you're speaking your own language? If you're speaking Chinese and you want to say A P P, knock yourselves out. Say it as much as you want. But if you're speaking in English, try to use the word app. That's the word we use. So we're talking about your apps or these small applications. On your phones that help you perform various functions. Line is an app. Instagram is an app, etc., etc. But the problem is, these apps may know more about you than you think they do, and that's what our article is all about. So please be careful with those apps. Big Brother might be watching you. Let's get to it, everybody. Let's listen to the first part of our lesson right now. Your apps may know more about you than you think. Mobile apps are incredibly useful tools that enable their users to do just about anything. Most are easy to download and use. However, some apps may be doing more than you're aware of with your personal information. 大家好，今天第一个单词我们看到的是 download。这个字当做动词，代表下载的意思。例如 ，Chris downloaded the photos that his sister sent to him by email. Chris 下载了他姐姐用电邮寄给他的照片。Apps, everyone, applications, computer programs—they're great. They help us get stuff done. They help us communicate with others, so on, so forth. But get this, folks: your apps. Those apps that you know and love and use on a daily basis. These apps. May know more about you than you think. Yes, maybe these apps. Maybe just maybe these apps are gathering information about you without you knowing it. And if you knew that was happening, okay, would you still use those apps all the time? Would you have downloaded those apps to begin with? Those are pretty good questions. Anyways,、mm. let's go ahead and start answering those questions and some other questions. Besides, let's do so by getting started on our lesson. The first sentence of our article says, "Mobile apps are incredibly useful tools that enable their users to do just about anything." Yes, apps are great. They're incredibly useful, but. If these apps are gathering information about me, unbeknownst to me, I kind of want to know. Okay, if they're doing bad stuff and taking my personal information, and and they're violating my privacy or invading my privacy, I kind of want to know. Okay, but beside that, okay. That being said, yeah, mobile apps apps are great. They're incredibly useful. Now, here in this sentence, we have the word "incredibly" to talk about. Here, the word "incredibly" means very. Extremely to a great degree. Yes, the adverb "incredibly" means in a way that might be surprising or difficult to believe. Incredible, very difficult to believe. Incredibly useful tools, and they enable you or allow you to do just about anything you want to. And of course, here in Taiwan, the social media 
apps are quite popular, especially Line. You can send messages to each other, send stickers, and all that kind of stuff. But there are other functions as well. You can post pictures.、Uh, you can use maps to find your way around, etc., etc. There are tons of uses to these apps, and most are easy to download and use. You、so、just go to certain、uh, websites or certain places. In your phone itself, actually, and you go there and you look for a certain application or app,、uh, a different kind of game that you want to play, maybe a GPS application or something like that. Hey, you name it, they've got it there, and you can simply download it. And download here is being used as a verb, but it can also be a noun. But、uh, to download something just means to get the information off the internet and put it on your computer or your smartphone. The opposite is upload. There you go. Now, if you want to download an app and you have an iPhone or an iPad, you go to the App Store, not the App Store. You go to the App Store and you can download an app. You can pay for it and download it then, or you can get one of those free apps and you can download that app immediately without paying a cent, and you can start using that app immediately. Anyways, though, more specifically. Okay, when you download something, let's talk about that. What it means to download something. To download something is to copy something onto your computer or your smart device or something like that from the internet. You can also do this. Okay, if you're using another computer, you can download something from another computer as well. But these days, when we're talking about apps and downloading apps. You do so by connecting to the internet and going to a website like the App Store or something like that. Yes, when you download something, you move it from the internet or from another computer. Okay, you move it from the internet or from another computer, and you move it onto your computer, or you move a copy of that thing onto your computer. Now, Roger also talked about uploading something. Uploading something is the exact opposite of downloading something. When you upload something, you put a copy of that thing. Onto the internet, whereas before it was on your computer. Now a copy of that thing is now on the internet. You download something or you upload something. Now the word download can also be a noun, though we're not using it in that way in this particular article. A download is something that you have downloaded. That's all there is to it. And an upload as well, but、uh, upload is mostly used as a verb. I'm going to upload some photos onto the internet, for example. However, some apps may be doing more than you're aware of with your personal information. So maybe you think you're just sending innocent little messages to your friends via Line, and you're including some stickers, pictures of cute little bears or rabbits or whatever. But、uh, you might actually be sending out more information to other people than you are aware of. Let's. Find out what this is all about by going on to the next part of our lesson. You may not even know what information the apps on your phone or tablet are able to access. While some apps illegally steal content, many are given permission to collect that information by users themselves. If this surprises you, recall that annoying terms and conditions page that most of us completely skip over before downloading apps. You may have inadvertently given an app permission to randomly use the camera function or share your information with a third party simply by clicking "I agree." 第二部分我们看到的单词是 access。这个字当做动词，它有读取、存取手机、电脑等的资讯的意思。所以我们可以说 Janice often accesses files on her home computer from her laptop. Janice 常常从她的笔电存取她家用电脑上的档案。再来，我们看到的单词是 content。这个字当做名词，代表内容、所含之物的意思。例如 ，Monique had to dig through the contents of her purse to find her house keys. Monique 必须翻遍她的包包，才找到她家的钥匙。Gosh, right before we took a break there, this article started to scare me a little bit. Yes. However, it said some apps, some apps that you know and love, may be doing more than you're aware of with your personal information. Apparently, these apps are taking our personal information. Maybe they're recording it and using it, even though we don't think that we have given these apps the permission to do these things. And yeah, as we're going to learn. 
we kind of have, in some situations, we kind of have given apps a lot of permission or we've granted these apps a whole lot of permission or access to our personal information. You might not know just how much your apps know about you. Anyways, let's go ahead and read the next sentence here. It says, you may not even know what information the apps on your phone or tablet are able to access. And yes, earlier I used this word access as a noun. I said, yeah, we're not exactly sure in many situations how much access we have granted to an app, let's say. Here though, we're using the word as a verb. To access something is to use that thing. Yes, to access a website, let's say, is to go on that website in order to use it. But here we're talking about these apps accessing our information. Yeah, they are taking that information and they're using it and we've done nothing to stop them apparently, or maybe at some point in the past, we've actually allowed them to do this. Indeed. So they can have access to our phones. And while some apps illegally steal content, many are given permission to collect that information by users themselves. So some apps that you may have downloaded to your phone are probably stealing content illegally. Well, probably not all of them are, maybe uh, just a few. If you're not careful, you might accidentally download an app that could actually do this. It steals content. Content just means information that is inside your phone. It could be anything. It could be pictures. It could be personal information in a file somewhere or old messages or something like that. It can actually steal that information from your phone and use it in some way. But in some cases, if we download apps, we actually give them permission ourselves. We actually give them permission. Yes, go ahead and take whatever information that you want from our phone. How could that possibly be? I've never said, yes, you can do that, but maybe you actually have. Now, there you go. You sound a little bit surprised. And yeah, this is normal. Very often people think there's no way, there's no way in the world that I have a loud apps on my phone or my tablet to do this. I have not granted them access to my personal information. I have not allowed them to do so. I have not given them permission to do so. But hey, guys, maybe, just maybe you have without knowing it. And yet, if this surprises you, recall that annoying terms and conditions page that most of us completely skip over before downloading apps. Yeah, before you complete the download, very often that terms and conditions page pops up. And yeah, I think we all, without exception, we just press agree. We click the agree button and we move on. We don't read the legal document that is in this terms and conditions page. After all, I think the document's like 20 pages long usually or something like that. So we just gloss over it or we don't read it at all and just click agree so that we can start using the app. But in that page, in that terms and conditions page, yeah, you might just be agreeing to give that app access to your personal information. You might be saying that it's okay to do so when you click that agree button without actually reading that actual legal document inside the terms and conditions page. How about that? Yes, you may have inadvertently given an app permission to randomly use the camera function or share your information with a third party simply by clicking I agree. So it goes further than just simple access to personal information. Apparently, you might even give this permission, this app, I should say, permission to use your camera function randomly, or you've also given the app permission to share your information with someone else, a third party. Oh my goodness, Roger, I'm scared. I'm scared too. It makes me want to actually take out my smartphone and erase every application on there and go back to using a simple dumb phone like in the old days. But in any case here, inadvertently means you didn't plan on this happening, okay? You just thought, well, they're probably not going to harm us. This is a trusted website. Everybody uses it all the time. Why would they want to get my information? I can trust them. So you just kind of skip over it. You press the 
the agree button, but you may have inadvertently, without knowing it, without planning it, you may have given an app permission to randomly use the camera function. And randomly here, when things are at random, that means they're not done with a specific method or in a specific order.、Uh, it just kind of jumps around. So they could use it maybe on one day and then two days later, or maybe two days in a row. Who knows? It's done randomly. There you go. Randomly, it's an adverb. It means in a way that is random. And like Roger said, the word random describes something that you can't really predict, or which is seemingly unpredictable, or which is done without a thought or a plan or anything like that. So, guys, you may have inadvertently or accidentally given an app permission to steal your life. Yeah, so just don't click "I agree" anymore without actually reading the fine print in that legal document. Seriously, guys, you have to read it at least once. All right, folks, with that, it's time for us to take a short break. But don't go away. When we come back, we'll be wrapping up day one of our lesson on apps. It is also essential to know why an app needs your information. Many apps need access to particular content in order to be used. For example. Instagram needs access to your camera in order to take and upload pictures. By contrast, other instances of information collection may seem unnecessary. Uber faced heavy criticism last summer because of a feature that allowed its app to track users for five minutes after they had completed their ride. Although the company claimed that the tracking helped ensure riders' safety, customers complained that the feature was an invasion of their privacy. 第三部分，我们看到的单词是 criticism。这个字当做名词，它有批评、批判或是指责的意思。例如 ，Wally 听从老师的批评，并思考要如何改进。英文可以这么说 ：Wally listened to his teacher's criticism and thought about how he could improve。再来，我们看到的单词是 invasion。这个字当做名词，代表侵犯、侵扰或是侵略的意思。所以我们可以说 ：An invasion of ants made us end our picnic early。蚂蚁的侵扰使我们的野餐早早结束。今天最后一个单字，我们看到的是 privacy。这个字当做名词，它有隐私或是私密的意思。所以我们可以说 ，To protect his privacy, Ian does not put any pictures of himself online. 为了保护隐私 ，Ian 不在网络上放任何他的照片。It is also essential to know why an app needs your information. Yeah, why the heck do they want that information? Why can't they just leave me alone, let me have the application, and then be done with it? Okay, but it's essential to know why they need your information. Okay, let's find out. Many apps need access to particular content in order to be used. For example, Instagram needs access to your camera in order to take and upload pictures. So, Instagram—that's a very popular application that people use on their phones. They're uploading pictures all the time and looking at pictures that friends have posted there, and you've got to see those pictures and you've got to post your comments. Otherwise, you're going to miss out and you're not going to be popular anymore. And these、uh, apps do need access to your camera because you are going to use that camera to take pictures and then upload them or maybe download some other ones later. But that makes sense, and Instagram—that's not really an evil app. And that makes sense if it's a picture-related app or an app that uses pictures and stuff like that. Access or granting access to your camera's phone—that makes sense. But by contrast, other instances of information collection may seem unnecessary. Yeah, Uber, the company Uber, faced heavy criticism last summer because of a feature that allowed its app to track users for five minutes after they had completed their ride. So, even after. The ride is over. Uber was tracking these movements, or the movements, I should say, of these users, and that does seem to me to be a little bit unnecessary. Anyways, here we've got the word criticism to talk about. Criticism is disapproval. It's the act of criticizing someone or something. Yeah, if you criticize someone or something, by the way, you point out the errors or flaws in something or someone. You point out the mistakes that someone has made. Let's say. Right. So, who wants to let a driver know where you're going five minutes after you get out of their car? They might stalk you or something like that. So, of course, they faced criticism 
or they were heavily criticized. You could also say that. Now, although the company claimed that the tracking helped ensure rider safety, customers complained that the feature was an invasion of their privacy. The company said, "Well, we're just doing this so that riders can feel safe after they get out of the car. We want to make sure they get to some place safe and they're not robbed or something like that." But the customer said, "No, no, no. You're not really doing that. This is an invasion of our privacy. Privacy is just being able to be by yourself. Sometimes people rent their own apartments by themselves because they like the privacy. They don't like other people around. And invasion means people are invading your privacy. They're actually going someplace where you want to be alone. Yeah, here people's privacy is being invaded." Or violated. Yeah, invade is the verb. Invasion is the noun. And yes, if you invade someone's privacy, yeah, you violate that person's privacy. And yeah, like Roger said before, privacy very simply is a state or a situation in which a person is not seen by others in public, or in which a person's information is not made public or is not made available. To others. Anyways, folks, with that, day one of our article on apps is now in the books and over. But don't go away; the Chinese teacher is on her way. Hello, 同学，大家好，我是 Hanny。我们来看今天的文法重点。课文一开始提到 ，mobile apps are incredibly useful tools that enable their users to do just about anything. 手机应用程式是极有用的工具，让使用者能做几乎任何事情。那这边帮同学们补充两个单词的相关用法，一个是 enable， 然后另外一个是 incredibly。好，那我们先来看 enable， 它的字首是 e n， 那它常常加在形容词或名词的前面，来形成动词。e n 这个字首呢，它有使造成的语义。那么 able 表示能够，我们把它组合在一起 ，enable 就表示使能够使实现或者使什么成为可能。常见的用法是 enable 某人或某事 to do something。好，如果你把字首 e n 改成 d i s， 这个字首 dis 它有分离啊、夺去或者是否定相反的语义。那么 disable 就表示使什么失去能力、使什么伤残。好，那它的过去分词 disabled 可以用来形容残废的、有缺陷的。还有 disability， 它是有 d i s。搭配 ability 组成，那当我们的能力被夺去啊，或者我们缺乏某方面的能力，那就表示缺陷或是障碍。好，接着来看 incredibly 这个字。要了解这个单字，我们应该先从 credible 开始。credible 的字根 c r e d 这部分，它表示信任、相信。那么字尾 i b l e， 它表示可以怎么样啊，能怎么样？把它合在一起，那就表示可靠的、可信的或是真实的。好，接着我们就在 credible 的前面来加上否定的字首 i n， 变成 incredible， 它就表示难以置信的、不可思议的，或者是可以用来形容非常好的、非常棒的。那么课文里面的 incredibly 是副词，它表示难以置信的，或者是极其怎么样、非常怎么样。我们顺便补充一组比较难一点的单词是 credulous 跟 incredulous。好，刚刚说啦 ，c r e d 它有信任、相信的意思。那么字尾 u l o u s 这个形容词字尾，它表示倾向于、习惯于怎么样。如果你总是倾向于相信别人，或者是太容易相信别人的，那就容易受骗啦。credulous。Credulous， 它就表示轻信的，或者是容易受骗的。那你加上否定的字首 i n， 变成 incredulous。incredulous， 那就表示不轻信的、怀疑的，或是疑心重的。好，那以上是今天重点整理，我们接下来回顾今天的单词吧。Download. I downloaded the band's new album as soon as it was released. Access. Will you be able to access the internet during your trip? Content. The content of this book is not suitable for young children. Criticism. A lot of criticism was directed at the government for the security failure. Invasion. The man was angry that the police had entered his home, which he felt was an invasion of his privacy. Privacy. We enjoyed the privacy that came with going to a private beach. 
Okay, everyone. With that, today's article is now complete. But as always, we sure hope that you guys have enjoyed reading along with us. Anyways, I'm Jeff. I am Roger. See you, See you next, next time. time.